Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Q&A with Dr. Paul. My name is Dr. Paul. Today I'm answering one of your questions, which is, what's the most important thing I need to do to ensure good USMLE scores? So, good USMLE scores are at the top of your list of things to do. Stick around, that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. All right, guys, before we dive in, do me a huge favor, hit the like button below. I would really appreciate it if you did that, if you're enjoying these videos. Let's talk now about what's the most important thing that you need to do to get good USMLE scores. Now, this is one of those questions where students are hoping for that one little secret, that magic bullet that gets them to the top of the chain when it comes to USMLE scores. And here's the good news and the bad news. The good news is that it's not all that difficult to get great USMLE scores. The bad news is though, there's not just one little secret. There's a couple things that you need to know and implement if you really wanna maximize your ability to score well. So let's dive in. Let's talk about the two most important things that you need to do to actually crush your USMLE scores. So if we're talking step one, the absolute most important thing that you need to have in place is this strong basic sciences foundation. You just absolutely cannot crush this exam if your basic sciences are not strong. It's the foundation of a good step one score. You can't just pick up the first aid, memorize it, and hope for a great step one score. It just doesn't work that way. And the reason is very simple. The people who write your questions are very, very smart. They also know that you're probably trying to memorize first aid. So while they'll pick a topic or a concept that's in first aid, they're gonna require that you can go three, four levels deep, think outside the box conceptually, and then apply that to a question. Meaning, questions aren't just gonna be straightforward factual memorization. They're not just gonna be straightforward, is this how this concept works? Is that how this mechanism works? They're gonna give you scenarios that require you to really, really think outside the box, twist things around, look at it from different perspectives. And if you don't have a strong foundation that's so strong that you can think three, four, five levels deep and then apply that knowledge, you're gonna be out of luck. So the most important thing that you have in place if you wanna do well on step one is a strong basic sciences foundation. Now there's two ways you get this. The first obviously and the, most, the best way in my opinion is to get a good basic sciences foundation education meaning med school. Now, you all have to go through med school if you want to take step one, but a lot of you are three, four, five plus years out of med school, meaning you're not fresh out of your basic sciences, meaning your basic sciences foundation is probably dwindled a bit and you need to build it back up. Now, if you are fresh out of med school, then you're in a perfect scenario to do well. So if you are, let's say, zero to six months out of med school, then you probably have a pretty strong basic sciences foundation and you're in good shape. If you are unfortunately not in that scenario, you need to rebuild it. There's a couple things you could do. The first is to get your basic sciences curriculum and start going through the textbooks again, go through all your PowerPoints, relearn the information. There's no shortcut here. And unfortunately, 99% of you who are far removed from your basic sciences want a shortcut. You can't take a shortcut to mastering something that takes two years to cover. It's really important that you recognize that if that foundation is not in place, then you're willing to put in the work. You can't replace two years of full-time school with a you know two or three week review of first aid. It just doesn't work. The second thing you can do is go to one of the more comprehensive step one review courses. For example, Kaplan has a several month long review course that actually covers everything in great detail. They use MDs, they use PhDs, and that's gonna be what you wanna do if you wanna build that foundation again from the ground up. And remember, in med school, you get a combination of MDs and PhDs teaching you because some things like biochem, is, MD is probably not gonna be able to teach you at the level you need, and a PhD will. So make sure that your instructors are gonna be a combination of both so that you get the best of both worlds. Now. Once you have that basic sciences foundation back in place, you've got the biggest hurdle out of the way to make sure that you can score well. And the second thing that you need in place if you want to maximize your USMLE scores is a strategy. And a strategy consists of two things. Number one, having a hard date in place. Number two, having a daily, weekly, and monthly plan of action. So let's first unbox the date. 
if you are studying for your step one, you need to have a date in place when your exam is to be taken. The reason why is because I've seen so many students over the years who don't have an exam date and they just dive into studying, but without an actual end date, let's say three months, you're kind of studying without an end goal in mind. Sure, your goal is to take step one, but if you don't have that date, you're not working specifically every day towards getting things done for that date. So that's the first thing. If you are ready to dive into your step one review, I want you to put a date in place. Now, it can be three months down the road, and if you're not ready in three months, that's okay, you can move it out a little bit. But don't just go into this with an open date, meaning no date, and just think that eventually you're gonna get ready because if you don't have that time frame in place, there's so much to do that you're gonna to struggle to get it done in that amount of time. So, like I said, if you can't meet that deadline, that's okay, but I want you to have a deadline in place so that you have something specifically to work towards. The second thing is a plan of action. You cannot sit down every single day and just say, today I'm doing genetics, and then figure it out on the fly. You need to have a specific hour by hour plan of exactly what you're going to do. In my mind, the simplest way to approach your step one studies is to have a, is to approach it with questions first, and then a review of the questions, taking notes, and then creating more condensed notes based on that. So let's say you work, you're going to do genetics. Wake up at 8 a.m., bang out one block of genetics, 40 to 50 questions, for example, in timed mode, then come back, review that material for two to three hours, take copious notes in a blank, notebook. And then once you've done that, you're going to take all those detailed notes, condense them even further into, let's say, one or two pages of high yield notes. That will be the notes that you're going to use to review as time goes. Now, you could take those condensed notes, turn them into Anki cards. You could do old school index cards. I don't care what it is. Have a definite strategy in place so that you are attacking each day with specific hour by hour goals. That's the best way to make sure that you slowly but surely move towards executing what you need to execute and get those goals taken care of so that the big goal of being done in, let's say, three months, four months, five months is being done, okay? So what you want to do, number one, have a hard date. Number two, have a daily plan of action. Very, very simple, okay? Now, once you've gone through all of the questions, you've taken all of the notes, you've condensed, you've done review, what you want to do is take an NBME exam. An NBME exam is going to be the best, most accurate way to find out where your score should be approximately, where your weaknesses are, where your averages are, and where your strengths are. Then based on that, what you should do is reconfigure your study plan to specifically address your weaknesses. So let's say you have three weaknesses. Let's just say genetics, biochem, and psych are your three weaknesses. Recreate a study plan moving forward that targets those weaknesses. Maybe you do 80% of your day addressing those weaknesses, 20% of your day to work on your above averages or your strengths so that you make sure that they are, remain strong and they don't fall into the weaker category. Once you've worked on those weaknesses and you feel more confident in those areas, retake an NBME, a different one, and then make sure you've improved everything you need to improve. Ideally, you wanna follow that cyclical strategy of tackling the, the, the subjects, doing an NBME, figuring out where you're weak, tackling those, taking an NBME, and you want to go from this scenario where you have a few weaknesses to fewer to none. And then once you've got none, once you're scoring very well on your NBMEs and you're where you want to be, then you're in a position to take your exam, assuming, of course, you're in a passing range. The goal should be to do this in the time frame that we set out at the beginning with our hard date. Now, if you find that you're a couple weeks out and you're not where you need to be, then don't worry about it move your date maybe a month. Whatever you have to do to make sure that you have the enough time to tackle those weaknesses, put yourself in a position to succeed. All right, so ultimately guys, what's the most important thing for success on your step one or your USMLEs in general? Number one is have the foundation in place. So if you're doing step one, basic sciences foundation. If you're doing CK, clinical sciences foundation. Ultimately, it doesn't matter which one you're doing. The foundation is the core element that, that, that's going to separate the average student from the above average student. And these days, there's more and more people applying. You need to be above average. The second thing, like I said, have a hard date in place so you have a goal to work towards and then make sure you create a day by day, hour by hour strategy for what you are going to do. That's going to keep you on track to get things done so that you can slowly but surely move towards your goals. And guys, that's it. That's the key 
to crushing your USMLE exams. Follow these strategies and you are going to put yourself in a great position. I hope that was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button. Please share this with your friends. And if you're not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop them in the comment section below. If you have an actual question about med school, residency, USMLE prep, drop it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it in an upcoming episode. All right, like I said, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you all for stopping by. We'll see you on the next episode.